Welcome back. At now, the latest of five major health insurers to project a loss due to the Affordable Care Act. The insurer scrapping a planned expansion due to that guidance. Joining us right now is the CEO of New York Presbyterian Hospital, Dr. Stephen Corwin. Dr. Corwin, good to see you. Hi, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us. So let's My talk pleasure. about Aetna. Another yeah. insurer saying, wait a second, this is costing us way too much money. Explain to us how, what has happened with the Affordable Care Act. Remember, the Affordable Care Act did two things, expand Medicaid and develop the insurance exchanges. The insurance exchanges are in trouble. We had a number of health co-ops fail, and now United and now Aetna are pulling out of the ins individual insurance market. That's a problem. What's most onerous about this uh, the legislation? Cost. And what's happening with the insurers is that the cost of insuring and the actuarial analysis associated with it leads to them saying we can't, we can't make it on the individual exchanges. Because healthy young people did not sign up for Healthy young people care, didn't sign even up. Even though it's by law that they're supposed to, they didn't sign up. So it's, and I, this is a question, so it's essentially sick people who cost a lot of money to If cover. you have adverse selection in any insurance uh, product, it's going to cost a lot of money. And so they can't make any money on it. This leads to the issue of uh, the Democrats basically proposing the public option, which would be a further expansion of government insurance in the exchanges if the exchanges become unstable. That's what President Obama and Hillary Clinton have proposed, right. that a, um, a, pu public a public option, which many see as the road to single payer or Medicare for all. And I think that we have to remember that the, the positives in this system are a balance between private and public pay. So the commercial insurers being viable, I think, is really important for health care in this country. Employer-based health insurance is important for this country. Otherwise, I think if we move to a single-payer system, I think it'll be a problem. That's, that's my personal right. so this is This is the last of one of the major five exchanges uh, providers left um, that pulled out. What is the solution? How do we fix this problem? Because we see what's happening now, but what is the solution? Any individual insurance market that can't insure healthy young people is not going to work. So we have to have a solution where the commercial insurers are insuring healthy young people as well as, as sick people. One of the issues with cost is this issue of specialty pharma drugs. And all the drugs now that we're seeing coming out on cancer care, uh, these are very, very costly drugs. The whole story about Savaldi, these are very costly drugs. Hmm. So that also drives Cavaldi, a lot of costs in the hepatitis C drug. That's the hepatitis C drug. And that's exactly what the CEO of Aetna said yesterday. He said it's the specialty pharma drugs that actually led to their decision and, and one of the reasons why they lost $320 million this past These quarter. Are These are life-saving drugs. drugs. And the immunotherapy drugs in cancer are um, revolutionary in terms of treating like um, melanoma, metastatic melanoma, even um, lung cancer, for example. Yeah, don't get me wrong. These are absolutely terrific drugs. And in the long haul, if you spend 90000 which is now $30,000 for a drug like Savaldi, you're eliminating a couple of million dollars worth of cost if somebody needs a liver transplant or something like that. So that's, that, that really is uh, a good point that you've made. Mm. Can I actually ask you about Zika? Because I'm, I'm sure. a woman of childbearing age, and so this is really concerning to me and, and some of my friends. Congress left, they went on recess you know, in August without passing any legislation to give funding uh, for, 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 for Zika. Yeah. I think the administration has redirected like $500 million towards help in Florida, where I think we have you know, at least a dozen cases now. Um, what, what can Congress do? do? Do we need a lot of public funding to solve? this and what can be done about Zika in Florida? You absolutely need to fund this. Okay. The Democrats and the Republicans have to fund this. There is just no question about the fact that we learned this with Ebola, mm. we're learning it now, there are no boundaries in, in the world today. Right. We've had cases in New York. Yeah, How that's what I was going to say because following the travel advisory in Miami, New York's transit agency is saying it's going to focus on, on getting rid of, of potential Zika exposure in the subway system. Yeah. Well, the City Department of Health has done a terrific job. The mayor has allocated an additional $21 million towards spraying. But to your point, 25% of the people in Puerto Rico could potentially get Zika. It's crazy. 50 pregnant, pregnant women a day are exposed to Zika. And any, any exposure to Zika during pregnancy, you're at risk with your unborn child. So this is a big deal. Mm. Um, it's, it, I, you have to allocate the money. And, we've, and Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. A lot of people travel to the Caribbean. People come back. 
Um, the simplest advice is if you go to a Zika infected area and you come back, do not get pregnant for at least a couple of months. And the reason for that is 20 to 30 percent of the Zika cases, you don't even know you've had it. And we don't wow. know how long wow. it stays in the system as well because the science is yet to be determined. The that. science is getting determined. I think that the CDC has done a pretty good job. We know that in males, um, in, in semen, it can exist for up to a couple of months after you return from a Zika infected area if you've had Zika. Does the mosquito creams that they sell, does that ward off the mosquitoes? I mean, should you be wearing mosquito cream all the time? You should be wearing long shirts, you should be wearing mosquito cream. and you Even in non-Zika places? And you have to spray. Yeah. You have to spray. Dr. Corbett, i got to congratulate you. Hospital rankings were released yesterday, U.S. News & World Report. Once again, New York Presbyterian right up there, ranking number one, uh, the number one hospital in New York metro area, number six nationally. Congratulations to Thank you to very you. much. Really so appreciate So to what do you that. attribute that, that? Tell us what's going on in terms of the connectedness and in, in terms of the hospitals in New York. Where does the growth come from next? We have great doctors, great nurses, but I think that your point is what we're doing in New York is we're starting to regionalize health care. Uh -huh. This is the issue about consolidation. Some consolidation is good, too much consolidation is not good. You're seeing this throughout the healthcare industry. Do you need to get bigger at this point, more consolidation? We're about $7 billion now um, as a health system. I think that that's big enough for right now. You about, have about six big health systems in New York. In some areas of the country, you only have one or two. That's creating a problem of excess consolidation. And you saw with the FTC um, in certain hospital mergers, and you've seen with the Department of Justice on some of the insurance mergers, could be a problem. Mm -hmm. That's Corbin, good to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks so I really much. appreciate it. Always, Thank uh, you. always a pleasure, pleasure. And congrats again. You're a Presbyterian. Uh, Dr. Stephen Corwin there.